A certain lawmaker calls for a part-time legislature in order to save costs for the National Assembly due to the ongoing pandemic. And the battle in a state chapter of the All Progressive Congress rages on as two factions emerge in the party and fight over the party's state secretariat. This is Plus Politics and I am Coyote Ladende. As the number of COVID-19 cases continue to rise globally, former Senate Majority Leader and current Chairman of Senate Committee on Army, Senator Ali Ndume, has canvassed the immediate adoption of part-time legislative status for the National Assembly to save costs during the period of the pandemic. Senator Ndume, who was reported to have asked for the quoting of the salaries of civil servants in the country, denied this comment, saying that he only called for the reduction of overhead costs, salaries of senior public servants, and the recurrent expenditure. Joining us to discuss this is Fred Nzako, a legal practitioner who will be joining us via Zoom, and a public affairs analyst, Femi Lawson. Femi, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Okay, I'm sure uh, you re you've uh, listened to that comment. Uh, what's your take? Immediately you heard that statement about what uh, Senator Ali Ndume did say. Well, first and foremost, I, I think it is important that, that uh, he has made that clarification, just like you earlier presented, about the call for the court in the salaries of civil servants. Of course, which he has clarified as not a call for the country, the salary of civil servants, the lower cadre of, of civil service. But I think the most fundamental takeaway from the position of Senator Alin Dume is a call for a part time legislature. And this is a call that several Nigerians, several pro democracy elements, several stakeholders in the country have made over the past period. We actually need a full-time legislature that we currently have. And what are the lessons that the COVID-19 pandemic has also taught us about the essence of some of these you know, institutions and if truly they are efficient or relevant? We have consistently clamored that the legislature in Nigeria should be part-time. It is very unfortunate that today a lot of our politicians, especially those in the, you know, in the political Office, offices have no second address other than being politician. And a lot of them are going to be opposed to this call by one of them who have demanded for, or who have added his voice rather to the call that has been age long. In 2014, when the National Conference you know, met, one of the key resolutions of the National Conference was this same part time legislature. How do we continue as a country to pay? You know, to spend over 70 percent of our annual budget, of our annual budget, or recurrent expenditures and personal, personal costs, a country that is spending just about 30 percent of its annual budget on capital projects, on real issues that affect the, you know, the, the, the populace, does not have any business keeping, you know, over 500 people as legislators, keeping them under series of allowances and, you know, and salaries. And I think it is time for the National Assembly to take this call by one of its very senior members seriously and look at the need for a part-time legislator. Femi. In this country today, like I said, yeah. Femi, uh, let me vote in here. Uh, uh, you know, like you said, this is not uh, a new call. This call had been in the offing, like you recalled. You also mentioned what happened at the National Conference, which is one of their resolutions. But what made it news is the fact that the quarters it is coming from but you know what makes it look like something that a lot of people will call impossible is the fact that the people that will have to change the constitution, that will have to review the constitution, 
are the real beneficiaries. So don't you think it's just a lone voice just to score political point? No, I think we must also always you know, understand that despite how you know, our democracy runs, we must always recognize the fact that the real mandate, the real owners of democracy are the people. And these people are only there representing the teeny millions of Nigeria. And if it is the wish of, of Nigerians that National Assembly must amend the Constitution to accommodate part-time legislature, then the, the National Assembly, as presently constituted or as maybe constituted in the future, does not have any choice because it is a call by Nigerians. And whether this uh, over 500 people you know, like it or not, if Nigerians want it and Nigerians are ready to demand for it, I think they will get it. So it is not enough to assume that the National Assembly will listen to the call of one of their own. I know they will not because they are the real beneficiaries. Let me give you an instance. The person that currently represents my senatorial district in Lagos has done no work since I've known him since 1999, other than being, a, being in the Assembly. He was in the State Assembly, from there to the House of Representatives, now a senator. People like that have made it you know, a lifetime ambition. And until Nigerians demand that our politicians should have second addresses, they should have some other professions that they are known with, and they should have some other jobs that they can do to contribute to the development of the society, of the society other than being political office holders, there will not be a change. Okay, it's not going to be a call that will be executed by the National Assembly members. It's a demand that will be made by the Nigerian people and with persistent pressure from the Nigerian people, it is achievable. Femi, if you call me a realist, uh, uh, I'm okay with that. But I'm looking at the reality on ground. Um, the context in which Ali Ndume mentioned this has to do with doing a part-time legislature for now. It's looking at the issue yeah. of the pandemic. It's not actually calling for a total overall like you posited. So don't you think that is sellable if we must look at the reality on ground because everybody is cutting costs according to him he even mentioned the fact that so uh, the top civil servant should also be affected the three arms of government should also be affected so don't you think we should take the context in which he said this thing seriously if the if the budget can be cut down if so many if people are losing their jobs why should the senator still be collecting a full-time salary or allowances well, well I, I, let me restate this. Like, just like you also said that this call has come from one of them. I am not, you know, trying to single out Senator Ndume for some form of crisis here. He's just, you know, he has just spoken out of maybe some of the circumstances that they have also found themselves not being able to travel, not, and maybe with some little sense of sincerity. But we must look at it beyond the period of the pandemic. Like I said, the COVID-19 situation has taught us so many lessons. It has taught us a lot of lessons, you know, as a country that even when we are out of this, we must live, you know, a life and a culture of prudence, management of our resources. In the past, we have had a situation whereby people, for no reason, will gather for meetings, meetings that can ordinarily be done, you know, via, you know, teleconferences like this. People have had to take travel allowances, hotel accommodation allowances, all sorts of frivolous as allowances. It's just because they want to gather for some funny meetings sometimes that does not last more than an hour or two. But, so we must look beyond the period of the pandemic and adopt some of these you know, recommendations as our lifestyle, as part of our culture, as part of our practice, as far as democracy is concerned. If the Indumet's position has been based on the present reality, I have seen it beyond that. And I think Nigerians that have called for part-time legislation in the past, I've seen it Thank beyond you. situations like we currently find ourselves. So it must be an holistic call. It must be a total call you know, for a reversal of the present system to a part-time legislature, where our legislators can also be known, known to have you know, other you know, addresses, other jobs that they do, other than being politicians. And it is very important that we take these lessons beyond the call for you know, a, a reversal of this system to part-time legislature, to other aspects of, of life in our country. For a country, like I insist, 
that spent 70 percent of its annual budget on recurrent expenditure will not make any meaningful progress because a lot of these expenditures goes to frivolous spendings you know are spent on things that are not really productive and are not impacting on the life of the citizens so that is why we must look at this beyond its call for an immediate you know measure to a permanent and holistic you know measure that will fundamentally address in cutting some of the cost of governance in nigeria you know femi i'm sorry i'm still staying on this uh, point i just asked you now what i'm saying this is if you make it a voluntary thing, which some of them are doing, okay, I'm going to take half of my salary. They should use part of this salary like they did in federal executive. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's more like a voluntary thing. So I I'm saying that shouldn't we look at passing a resolution to be part of this, you know, cost cutting of costs, just like it's happening in many companies. Some people have been laid off, and those people that are retained were told, oh, you got to lose some percentage of your, uh, uh, your pay. Right. So don't you think, I'm talking about the media, before we talk about the broad picture, I mean, the, 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 uh, yes, the larger picture. It is very, very important, especially for the political class, to agree as using the National Assembly on an immediate cost, not on their salaries, on all sort of allowances, you know, that are credible to them on a monthly basis. I don't even think that this should have been a point of demand from Nigerians, especially for any reasonable government that has seen what Nigerians have gone through. During the period of the lockdown, we have seen a situation whereby a lot of Nigerians have almost had to beg for food. You understand? So I think it is important that it is made a national policy as urgent as possible for an immediate cut, not only in the salaries of political office holders, but also all some all sort of allowances. If in the course of this lockdown, we had revelations about how the managing director of a government agency, you know, claimed to have traveled and spent you know, money on traveling on the hotel accommodation, even during the period of the lockdown. These are issues that must be addressed. A lot of these people are still taking allowances, a lot of them are still taking sitting allowances. They are still taking all the, the funny, funny alliances that are credible to them as members of National Assembly, as executive directors, as chairmen of boards and commissions. Now, there must be a national policy to call for an immediate cut in the salaries of these people who are ordinarily, you know, initially being overpaid in the, in the, in, in the opinion of so many Nigerians. Uh, Femi, I, I, it's unfortunate you don't have them sitting close to you to also bring you their take. But some of the things I have listened to them, some of the arguments they made is that um, there is so much, at least I know some of them, probably on TV, on radio, who are using whatever they are getting to cushion the effect of this lockdown. And in many cases, or in so many times, they also reach out to these people. Have you also looked at those who are judiciously, you know, spending these allowances on the people and probably we take a cue? Trust me, it might, not be, it might not be easy okay. for these people to live peacefully or peaceably this time when the, their neighbors, the people who vote for them, are yet to find something to eat. To, to, to start with, how many of these people have actually done anything you know, considered you know, reasonable enough to cushion the effect of the, you know, lockdown on the on their constraints. You can hardly count you know the fewer the few, very few number of people who have done this. And I think we must get it right. It is not ordinarily the business of a legislature to come and you know give palliative if we are actually operating by the dictate of what their job should be. These are the same people that vote monies in billions you know to a particular ministry of government you know to take care of issues like the palliative and some other needs that are arisen as a result of the COVID-19 lockdown uh, you know, globally and in our country. How much more were vote, have they voted to the Ministry of Humanitarian, you know, for, uh, for example, how much more have they been able to supervise the spending of these are, the, these are things that should be their priority. If we have voted billions of Naira to the Ministry of Humanitarian and Disaster Management, and as legislators, we have been able to monitor how this has been distributed. You will have no business 
using whatever allowances we get to buy okay. rice and bread and be distributed. Let me, because that would have been taken let me hold your by, the, there. by the ministry. And, and, and I, you have the, I, I want you to hold your thought. I want you to hold your thought. You've asked a critical question. We're being joined by Fred Nzako, a legal practitioner who is joining us via phone. Uh, uh, Barrister Fred, let's start with this. As much as I can preempt what your position is on this issue, but let's look at the other side. The fact that Senator Ndume also includes top civil servant that should also be affected in cutting the cost. Don't you think we should uh, 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 take this statement seriously, or you also believe that this is just uh, an El Dorado that we may not actually achieve? Well, the, the position, the position of uh, Senator Tume is a welcome position because um, that is one of the major things that will help to cut down cost of governance especially with respect to the legislature. <clears throat> it will not only cut down the cost of governance, it will make for a more effective legislative process. If um, Nigeria cannot think of unicameral legislature, it can think of a part-time legislature. It can think of a part-time legislature. And uh, by so doing, even civil society organizations and other professional bodies can be involved in the legislative process. Let's take, for example, a body like the MBA, the NMA, the Nigerian Guild of Editors, and um, even Nigerian Union of Journalists and all such similar professional bodies. They can come together fashion out laws and policies and programs and forward that forward them <laughs> to the legislature for enactment. So I think it is a work on development. Okay, uh, Barista, uh, as a lawyer, I, I know that um, this looks like something that m may be very difficult to achieve, talking about part-time legislature, when the people that will do it are actually the primary beneficiaries of this current system. So how practicable, you've mentioned different unions, you've mentioned different bodies, but how practicable can this be taken, at least for the immediate, looking at the current reality? Because he, has, he was very specific that this has to do with the current reality and not necessarily um, a constitutional review. The first step. The first step towards achieving such is to review the constitution. Just a review. Okay, uh, I think. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, we have a, a network problem. I sincerely hope that uh, Barrister Fred can take his time, take like a cup of water, and if he can still join us, that will be fine. But Femi, let me take that question straight to you. How do we achieve this? Looking at, you know, uh, uh, um, giving it a serious thought. Because this will just pass as one of those comments we read on the pages of newspaper every day. Well, fundamentally, I will want to agree with Vice Fred by also using that to tell Nigerians that our role in a democracy is not limited to participating in elections every four years. The role of the people in a democracy is to vote people in and monitor how the system is operated. It's a very unfortunate that in our own climb, when people vote, they sit back and wait until the next four years before you know they take further action, made by participating and voting in another set of people or actually returning those set of people that they have initially elected. I think the most potent way of achieving this is by ensuring that Nigerians continuously demand for change in policies of government, in, 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 the, in the approach of, in, 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 by which you know, our leaders you know, operate this democracy. 
the, it, has, it has become a reality to us that a lot of people in political position in the whole part of the world do not actually you know, believe in the power of the people until they are made to, you know, until they are pushed to do so. A lot of them actually operate on the basis of their own personal wishes and aspirations, not on the basis of the wishes of the people. So it is now my opinion that it is pertinent for Nigerians to consolidate on this call that has been made and demand as a people for you know a fundamental review of you know the system okay. has been operated, particularly the need for us to revert to a partner legislature and also demand for a court in the allowances and salaries, wages payable to political office. Holders. Okay, Femi. It is not going to be done by these people until Nigerians arise make and that demand. demand. Uh, Femi, uh, one of the things he also yeah. said, and I, I would like you to have your take on it, he concluded by saying that uh, he is for parliamentary system of government, that we should return to what we practice from 1960 and probably to 1966 when the military men took over, that uh, for him, that would go a long way in saving the cost. Uh, probably he put into consideration you know, the extra code that the executive also enjoy and all manner of allowances that with the parliamentary system of government, that would be better. Do you share that opinion too? Well, a lot of, a lot of Nigerians, a lot of time we have asked that uh, even during the series of constitutional amendments of the past, that the country reverts you know, to the parliamentary system of government, where a lot of people particularly the beneficiaries of the current political order, have always, you know, interpreted this call as a call, you know, for the polarization of the country. You and I were here in 2014, and we saw how people vehemently, vehemently rejected this idea of returning the country to regional government. It is perceived as a call, you know, for disintegration of the country by some people. But the truth is that it is not that the presidential system has currently been practiced it's not, you know, good. The truth is that how we have been able to practice the presidential system is what has actually affected us up to this point. There are countries of the world, even in the best of democracies, that have successfully, you know, practiced the presidential system and have had efficiently working, you know, institutions. But in our own case, we have a situation whereby, you know, our our institutions have not been made to work because we. We have invested so much on the operatives of the system than the system itself. And that is in a country that spends 70% of its annual earnings on recurrent expenditure, even if it's in a parliamentary demo uh, democracy, it will not make any progress. What we need to do is to reorder our priority as a country and truly practice you know, the real presidential system through, you know, by practicing a true federalism. The current presidential system does not reflect any sense of true federalism, and that is why you have an over-concentration of power you know, in Abuja. At the have center. The Bogos National Assembly. That, you understand? If we actually practice true federalism under this presidential system, we'll make the required progress, and the country will work. Okay. So while, of course, I don't think our problem is going back to the parliamentary system or not, but having a full-time legislature of over 500 people sitting only three times in a week and doing nothing fundamentally visible, as far as some of us are concerned, is okay, some of the questions that we must ask and Femi. demand for a change. So I'm not surprised when you say we will continue to ask for a change, we will continue to make a demand. I'm afraid this is how far I can take from this segment. Thank you once again, Femi Lawson, a public affairs analyst, for your time. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a break now, and when we return, the latest in the battle for the leadership on a dual state. We'll be right back.